Hey friends, Elizabeth here from Plant-Based Bride, and I'm excited to be back with another bullet journal setup, this time for February. And the art for the setup definitely took quite a long time. I really wanted to do a theme inspired by some of those really loose, quick sketches that you sometimes come across of architecture, especially older architecture in a city that picks up a lot of that intricate detail while still being sort of messy and quick and done with just a looser hand and then highlighted with some equally messy and fast looking watercolor. Now, some people might be able to do this kind of an urban sketch in this style incredibly quickly for real, but I have never been someone who is fast at doing art. It always takes me a very long time, even when I'm trying to do a messier style. So this was no different. This took me more than a couple of days. First, I had to find my inspiration photos. I scoured Pinterest for interesting photos of old buildings in various cities and I found a couple that I really liked that really stood out to me that I decided to try to kind of recreate. Then I needed to sketch out my three scenes. I just wanted to make sure the scale was good and I just had a basic idea of what elements were going where. And once I had those sketches ready, it was time to get all that inking in, which again, it is meant to be messy. It's meant to be a very quick style and I tried so hard not to be too precious about making things perfectly straight or have things match exactly, but I definitely find it very hard to consciously force myself to be messy. When I want something to be perfect, I will invariably <laughs> make it look messy, but when I want something to be messy, it's like my brain cannot let go of the idea that I have to make a perfectly straight line and everything needs to be exact and, you know, I have to color perfectly within the lines. So it was a bit of a challenge. I'm using my Secura Micron fine liners to do all the inking so that it will hold up nicely even when I do the watercolor on top. And I really wanted to get the scene completely sketched in, get all of that line work done and leave that ink to dry fully overnight. It definitely doesn't need that much time to dry, but I wanted to err on the side of caution because I knew I was going to be using a lot of water in the adding color stage, in the watercolor stage of this art. I'm using a very fine point micron. I'm using my 005 nib and just going over certain areas that I want to be a bit darker to get a little bit of variation. But I did all of the inking, all the sketching with a single pen. So you don't necessarily need to have a bunch of different pen options, especially for this kind of sort of quick sketch, messy art kind of style. I feel like it sort of lends itself well to a single pen and you definitely can do it even faster, even messier than I did. Some of the art that I've seen in this style is incredibly messy and, you know, a window might be one sort of wiggly line <laughs> to represent where the window goes. And it looks amazing. I think I don't have enough confidence in my architectural sketching skills to kind of leave things up to the imagination that much. I felt like I had to get a little bit more granular with the detail. I also just kind of enjoy getting carried away in the details as you might have noticed if you've been watching my videos for any length of time. So I went a little bit more intricate, but you definitely could do something even messier, even quicker um, and still get a really beautiful result as many pieces of art in this style on the internet can show you. These aren't exact replicas of the street scenes that they were inspired by. There are definitely things that I changed just for aesthetic purposes. You know, there are areas where I added windows where there weren't any on the actual buildings. There are places where I altered the look of an awning. I simplified some areas. I added some foliage, some plants to areas where there weren't any in the originals, just to try to balance things out and add a little bit more interest as I went along.
for the final touch, I decided to add some rectangles in the background, just messily overlapping lines really quick. I don't know why, I just feel like this is a nice way to kind of finish it off. I do really like adding frames of some kind, even sort of offset frames to art that I make. It just feels like that finishing touch sometimes adds a little bit more interest and can help kind of balance out the composition. If I feel like the art I'm drawing is sort of heavier visually on one side than the other, adding some sort of an offset frame in the background on sort of the opposite side can help balance it out visually, if that makes sense. But once I finished that, I left my line work to dry overnight before coming back in the morning to add some color. So I'm using my Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolors and my designer's gouache. I don't know 100% for sure which colors are gouache and which colors are watercolor because I exclusively used dried paint that was already on my palette. <laughs> I do like to try to use up the paint that I've already mixed on my palette. I almost always end up with extra when I'm mixing colors for a painting. So in future paintings, if I can use up the colors that are already there, I do prefer to do that. And it doesn't always work for different projects I'm doing, especially when I want colors that have a bit more of a punch opacity wise, because in that case, I'd rather use paint more directly from a tube rather than adding water to dried paint on my palette, because that's always gonna end up being more transparent, less opaque. But in this case, having transparency was exactly what I wanted. So this this was a perfect use case for all that dried paint on my palette. As for the color scheme, I wanted it to be bright and fun, but not have too many different colors and start to feel a little overwhelming. So I decided to stick to four colors primarily, a soft dove gray, a nice warm yellow, a warm green, and a bit of an extra pop with an orangey, almost coral pink. So for this first one, I'm just starting with that dove gray and I'm using a pretty wet brush. I am doing wet on dry, so my paper is dry. I didn't wet my watercolor paper before I started painting, but my brush is quite wet. And I'm really trying to apply the color in a messy, overlapping way. I'm not trying to stay within the lines and I'm also not trying to fill in everything with color. I do want there to be openings and gaps. I want there to be darker areas and lighter areas. So some of that I'm doing very messily and just kind of letting it lay as it does. And some of it I'm engineering a little bit more, you know, adding certain areas of darkness following kind of the architectural elements of the buildings. So I'm trying to be messy. I'm letting colors sort of overlap. I'm not waiting for each color to fully dry before moving on to the next, because I'm fine with them sort of bleeding together in a couple spots. That's kind of the look I'm going for. I have seen pieces of art in this style that use a single color or maybe only two colors. I've also seen ones that get much more intricate with the colors or have a wider array of colors or values. So there's definitely a lot of things you can play with with this sort of style, but I had fun sticking to my color palette. I feel like it's still sort of a bright and vibrant palette. We have some variety in here, but it's not too overwhelming to the eye, I think. I feel like the colors sort of work together and they're definitely not inspired by real life. In real life, these scenes were much more brown, <laughs> which is fine. They look beautiful, but I definitely wanted to have a bit more of a bright, whimsical quality to the artwork. So I decided to go with brighter colors, both for that reason and because they were the colors I had on my palette and I really wanted to use that dried paint. Moving over to the second piece of art here, both of these pieces are going to be on my cover page. I basically want a two page cover page spread. So I really wanted them to look cohesive enough that they felt like they could fit together as kind of one piece split into two. So still using the same color palette, my dove gray, my green, my yellow, and my sort of orangey coral. I'm trying to keep the orangey coral color to a minimum because it is a very bright, punchy, eye-catching color. So I'm definitely prioritizing the dove gray, the green, and the yellow, and then using that bright corally orange pink as more of an accent in smaller calculated areas.
Once I was happy with the color on these first two drawings, I let this watercolor dry for quite a few hours before starting on the final piece, which I'm doing in the exact same way. I found a street scene that I liked and I sketched out my approximation of it, simplifying certain elements and adding some detail in certain areas that felt a bit too empty. And then it was time to do the sketching process all over again. This one went by a little faster because I had my sister on FaceTime and we were just chatting the whole time I was drawing. So this one went by super quick. I really liked the perspective of this shot sort of looking down a narrow street or a narrow alley with these older homes on both sides. There's kind of a fun perspective that way and it gives a different feeling from the other two which feel very sort of stately like the corner of a major intersection in the old quarter of a city whereas this feels like you know a couple streets back from the main strip just a little side street in between these older buildings again i'm just doing this all with a single pen my 005 and just darkening up certain areas that I want to have a little bit more depth and keeping other areas a little lighter. I definitely went a little more heavy handed on the extra detail and darkening up certain areas on this drawing. Part of that was just the fact that I was on FaceTime, <laughs> so I was mildly distracted. My brain was engaged with having a conversation. So I just kind of let my hand do what my hand was gonna do. And I really like how it turned out, but it definitely is a little bit more highly detailed than the first two drawings, which I think is fine. I did actually have a completely different street scene in mind at first and I started sketching it and then it just occurred to me that it wasn't right. It didn't feel right. The composition of the shot looked nice as a photograph, but when I tried to make it into a drawing, it just didn't quite translate and I tried to keep making it work for a while and it just wasn't sitting right with me. I wasn't happy with it. So I put it aside, went back on Pinterest, kept searching for street views in cities, old buildings. And I found this shot of this alley and it definitely struck me right away as being a little bit more dynamic in terms of its composition, which is why I decided to go with this one instead and start it over. So you're definitely not alone if you've ever started on a piece of art and partway through you just think, this is not working the way I want it to work. And you feel an urge to start over. I know that feeling, it happens to me all the time. And <laughs> it's totally fine to decide to start over. You're not giving up. Sometimes things just don't work out. And that's one of the things I love about art is that you can, you know, really get comfortable with the idea that some pieces are just little experiments and you can do a little bit on them and then think, you know what, this isn't really worth the time to finish. Maybe I'll come back to it at some point, but if I don't, that's also okay. Sometimes it's just not quite right and you can spend your time doing something else. Once again, left this ink to dry overnight, again, just out of an abundance of caution to make sure that the ink was nice and dry. I wouldn't be affected by adding watercolor over top. And then it was time to add my color. And again, I'm just going in with my same four color palette, my dove gray, my yellow, my green, and my poppy coral orange. Just like I went darker and a little more intense with the details on this, piece. I feel like I also went a little heavier on the color. It's a little more saturated and a little darker in certain areas, a touch busier. I think if I were to redo it, I would have had a bit of a lighter hand on the color on this piece and left more gaps and 
and just generally used more water and been a little softer with it. But that's not to say that I don't like how it turned out. I do like it. And it definitely adds to that element that it feels like it's sort of a darker alley where you would think that the lighting would be a bit darker because the buildings are closer together. It's harder for the sunlight to really get into the street. So these buildings would feel a little darker than buildings that are on a big open corner where it's easier for the sunlight to illuminate the facades. So that's kind of my headcanon for why this painting is a little bit darker, but really it's just that I did it on a different day and I was feeling different and it is what it is. <laughs> it just kind of happened and that's fine too, especially with art that's meant to be a little bit more free-flowing and messy. You just kind of have to let it go where it goes and let go of too many expectations that are too specific or precise because that's not what this kind of art is. Is supposed to be. Of course you could do this kind of art with so many different color palettes and get a very different mood, especially if you went with cooler tones like grays and blues and purples. I feel like you could get something that feels more sort of cold and wintry and moody, whereas I've gone with these brighter warmer colors that definitely make it feel a bit more summery and bright, which is not necessarily perfectly in line with the weather where I am right now in February in Canada, but it's the mood I need in February in Canada, if you know what I mean. I needed some warmth and sunniness in my life. You could also choose to go with neutrals that better match the actual buildings that you're basing your art off of. I did something similar with my, I think it was also my February plan with me a couple years ago with the Dark Academia theme. I'll link it in the description box if you missed that one or if you weren't here all those years ago. But that one, I went with browns and grays to better match the actual reality of the facades of these buildings. And I think that looks really cool too. But this time I wanted to do something a little bit more fun. Once I finished adding watercolor to this painting, it was time to scan these so that I could print them out on regular printer paper, which would be less stiff in my bullet journal and also allow me to keep the originals, which I do like to do when I can. As always, my patrons will be receiving these printables as well. The first tier receives a single printable in B5 and A5 size, as well as a PNG file with a transparent background to use for digital journaling. And then the second and third tier patrons will get all three pieces of art. These definitely took a long time <laughs> to edit in Photoshop to get the colors right and to cut out the background because some of the watercolor, especially the gray, was really, really light. So I'm just gluing those first paintings in and I did want to add a header of some kind. So I'm just adding February here along the left side in a sort of messy elongated cursive that felt like it fit the vibe. And then flipping the page, I added the third painting. I'm gonna have my monthly calendar across from this one. But before I add the calendar, I wanna cut out my tabs just to make sure that I know where those are going. So for my tabs in my B5 size notebook, I cut them two by two on the diagonal, four spaces tall on the side, and then another two by two diagonal coming back in. And that gives a nice size tab and allows me to have a separate tab for each weekly. So it's really easy to flip between weeks or back to my calendar. Once I had those cut out, I could start working on my calendar. And I decided to go with the same calendar layout that I tried in January, which was a little month at a glance calendar and then a separate list with each day written out on its own row to be able to add any events or appointments or whatever it is that you need to write out on your calendar. I enjoyed using this new layout in January, so I thought I would give it another month and see how it goes. So this time I wanted it to kind of fit that vibe of the sort of messy overlapping technical drawing lines. So I just added these rectangles and squares that 
overlap crossover at the corners. Still using my 005 nib micron, just using a really nice light hand. And then I decided to add a quote here in this empty gap. So the quote I chose to use was, that it will never come again is what makes life so sweet by Emily Dickinson. This isn't really specifically relevant to the setup necessarily, but it does feel relevant for my life right now. I decided to paint my tabs in the same color palette, so I'm starting with that dove gray. And I also felt like my calendar page just looked a little drab, a little empty. So I decided to add some little blotches of color, again, mostly focusing on the dove gray and a really soft, light version of the yellow, just to really tie it in with the art on the other side and give it a little bit more color and interest. Once all that paint was dry, I flipped over to my first weekly. And of course I'm painting the tabs here as well, painting the other side of my dove gray tab. And I'm also painting a nice light yellow tab. For the weekly itself, I'm sticking with the same two page rolling weekly that I've been using for the last couple months. Really loving being back to the rolling weekly. I feel like taking the break that I did just made me appreciate this spread so much more. I do have a whole video talking about the rolling weekly. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, I will link that for you and you can check it out but it is my favorite weekly layout and I've used it for years and years. I decided to use the same loose elongated cursive for my headers for each day of the week on my weekly here. And then I just decided to add a little bit more soft watercolor blobs <laughs> to each weekly as well, just to keep that through line going for the entire setup. I honestly really enjoyed adding these blobs because I could just add them kind of anywhere in whatever shape, just for a little punch of color. And I found that very relaxing. As I was working on my weeklies, Chewy demanded snuggles. So once again, I thought I'd turn the camera so you could appreciate how adorable he is when he is demanding snuggles. He also loves to demand that I kiss him on the head when he's cuddled up on my lap, which I can never resist because he has the cutest little floofy face in the entire world. <laughs> And that brings us to the end of this setup. I'll do a little flip through here so you can see each of the spreads and how these tabs turned out. I decided to add both a lighter yellow and a darker yellow just because I didn't really have five different colors in my color palette. I only really had the four primary colors. But I like how this turned out, especially because my dove gray ended up looking a little more greenish <laughs> when I added it to the tab. So it sort of looks like two shades of green, two shades of yellow, and then a nice poppy coral as the final color, which I think looks nice and definitely feels like it fits the overall color palette of this theme. So that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Give this video a like if you did and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you as always to my patrons for your support. I appreciate you all so much. And if you at home want to join the Patreon and get some printables, check out the link in the description box down below. Leave the emoji that you think best represents this theme in the comments if you made it all the way to the end so I know you're a real one. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. It really does help me out. And with that, I think I'm gonna get going. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you really, really soon in my next one. Bye friends.